Well, good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, today we are celebrating or continuing our uh, Eastertide celebration with this now the fourth Sunday of Easter. But today we also get a wonderful other addition, and that is that today is also the day we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. So you'll get those themes, I think, throughout our service, different pieces that are based off of gospel readings from like John chapter 10 or from Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. Everything focusing us around the fact that, well, you and I are like sheep, but Christ is our good shepherd. Even as we stray, he still comes to bring us back into the fold once more. I also want to note that right before the sermon, I am planning today on doing a children's sermon. So if, there, if you have little ones with you and you want to bring them up for the children's sermon, you can do that. If I don't have any kids come up here, well, I'll still do it. I'll just do it from up here, I guess. Yeah. Well, thinking along these lines with us as the sheep of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let's go ahead and begin by singing, I am Jesus, little lamb. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. We continue with a modified confession and absolution to point us toward our good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, We confess to you that we have been ungrateful for all you give us to sustain our bodies and lives. Forgive us, good shepherd. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Like sheep, we are distracted and tend to wander and scatter. We forget who we are as baptized children of God and fail to respond to your shepherding in our lives. Forgive us, good shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
we confess that in difficult times of life, we sometimes struggle to be confident in your presence and protection, seeking to find our own comfort. Forgive us, Good Shepherd. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we journey through this sinful world, we to overlook the goodness and mercy that flow into our lives from you. Forgive us, Good Shepherd. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, hears our cries and says to us, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Receive the forgiveness won for you through Christ laying down his life and rising from death in victory. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. We join together now in our hymn of praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Risen Lord, you are the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. They are yours, and nothing will snatch them from your hand. In the love you've shown and the perfect love we know through your Spirit, empower your flock to reach others that all may be guided by your shepherding grace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with this morning's scripture readings. The first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. 
And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from the book of 1 John, the third chapter, starting on the 16th verse. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and flees, and uh, leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
Any of you who have little ones, if you'd like, you can come down here for the children's sermon, and I'll sit down right here next to you. Otherwise, I can just preach from here, I suppose. You boys want to come on up? Wonderful. Yep, just go ahead and come on up here and have a seat right around here. I'll sit down with you guys. <laughs> yep, just go ahead and pop a squat. Did you bring your big brother? That's good, even though she doesn't even want to sit next to you. <laughs> well, good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. There we go. You guys aren't used to coming up here in church, are you? That's okay, I'm not used to it either yet. <laughs> well, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Do you guys know what a shepherd is? Yes. What is a shepherd? A person who has a lot of sheep. A person who has a lot of sheep. Okay, well, what's a sheep then? A bunch of wool. Okay, and they were often, yeah, especially in Old Testament times, used as sacrifices. Okay. What did you say, Ladarius? I didn't quite hear you. Okay, a sheep are a symbol of God's chosen animal. Okay, that's also a good way to look at it, too. Did you know that the Bible often talks about us as God's people being sheep? It talks about us as being sheep, with Jesus being our good shepherd. Now, a shepherd is more than just somebody who owns sheep. A shepherd is someone who tries to protect sheep. In fact, if you look over there at that yellow banner, do you see that big brown-looking cane? It almost looks like a candy cane without the stripe. Well, shepherds often had one of those. In fact, it was very long, much longer than what you see there. And that's called a shepherd's crook. They would often use that to defend the sheep. They could use it to smack wolves if wolves were coming to try to attack the sheep, or if a sheep had gotten stuck somewhere, like in a, a briar bush or in a tree, they would use that hooked part, and yeah, they would grab them and try to pull them out. Because sheep, sheep are not the smartest animal. In fact, well, sheep like to eat lots of grass, like a lot of other farm animals, but while they're eating grass, they don't really pay any attention to where they are with reference to the flock. So it's easy for them to wander off. And a, a sheep that wanders off is easy pickings for a wolf or could easily fall off a cliff or all manner of different things. But that's just like it is for you and me. That's why the Bible talks about us as being sheep. The Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us goes to our own way. But God has to come and lead us back. And he does that especially through Jesus, our good shepherd, the one who laid down his life for the sheep. That's what he did on Easter for us. Well, that's what he did on Good Friday, and then he rose again on Easter. He died for we sheep so that our sins would be washed away. So it's actually a good thing for us to be called sheep, for us to be his sheep, his lambs, because he seeks to protect us and to care for us. Now I'm going to teach you part of a song to sing that goes along with this, too. So I want you guys to all put up two fingers on each hand. And I want you to put them next to your head. And if you guys want to join in with this, you can do this, too. Can you wiggle them around a little bit? All right, I just want to make sure you guys are paying attention. Now the song goes, I just want to be a sheep. Can you say that? I just want to be a sheep. Then you say, ba, 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 and you wiggle your little finger ears. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I pray. You make praying hands. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. So let's go ahead and sing it real quick. How about that? And you guys may join in with us. It might help the kids out a little bit. But let's go ahead and do this and sing it. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Thank you, guys. Why don't you guys go ahead and go back to your seats? Thank you so much. <laughs>
I'm going to fall over, my goodness. Oh, how wonderful. How many of you have heard that song before? I would expect probably most of you, right? That's a good kid's song for church, right? A good camp song, too. I just want to be a sheep. And it's so much fun to wiggle your little fingers around. It's a good thing to remind us who and what we are. We are God's sheep, saved by our good shepherd. All right, so let's move on from the children's sermon then into the regular adult sermon, I suppose you could say. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now in our gospel reading from John chapter 10, which we read just a little bit ago, of course, Jesus has some pretty cool stuff to say. He says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus' disciples really didn't have any idea what he was talking about at this point. They would have known that God had often referred to his people as being sheep. But once again, as normal, Jesus was telling them that he was going to have to die for them, and yet they still missed the point. But we know that they eventually got it, right? That's why we're here. We are those who follow after them, who follow the teachings of the apostles before us. Because we know Christ, the Good Shepherd, through the Word of God. Now, for hundreds of years, the church has celebrated Good Shepherd Sunday. And it was always observed sometime during Eastertide between Easter and Pentecost. Do any of you know how long that season is? I've gotten this at every service. People say 40 days, some people say 50 days, but... Do any of you know what the word penta means? Five, yeah, so that would be 50 days. Penta cost is 50 days after Easter. So it always happens sometime during that Easter tide, but in more recent years, we actually nailed down a particular Sunday to do it on, and so we picked the fourth Sunday of Easter. That's the way that churches do it in our day. And it's an important Sunday for us to observe because it brings us back to realize who and what we are. We are the sheep of God, with Christ as our good shepherd. You know, during this past week, I'm not sure if it was because Good Shepherd Sunday was coming up or if it just seemed to happen, but my wife shared a video with me from Facebook. All right? Not an uncommon occurrence. But in this short little video clip... There is a sheep who is stuck in a hole. Not just a hole, it was actually about a foot wide and about a foot deep crevice, if you will, that was cut into a ditch to lay pipe in. All right? The sheep had gotten itself stuck head first down in this crevice. So the owner of the sheep goes and he pulls the sheep out finally. And when the sheep gets out, the sheep is happy, it's frolicking, it's jumping for joy, leaping. But you know what happened within five seconds after being freed? It jumped right back in the hole. Doesn't that just sound like us? Christ our Lord goes to us. He goes out to pull us back from things that seek to tear us away from him, to pull us back from sin, to forgive us our sins and wash us clean. And we're so overjoyed. We're happy. And then what do we do right afterwards? We fall right back into it again. Every single time. Thank goodness our good shepherd is so loving and patient with us. The Gospel reading for Good Shepherd Sunday is generally from John chapter 10. In fact, even when it's not from John chapter 10, it's always from John's Gospel, because John's Gospel is the one, I think, that relates this relationship between we as the sheep of God and God himself. 
this relationship that we have with him. And it's a wonderful thing. I would bet that every single one of us in here treasures some image of Jesus as our good shepherd. Some of the most memorable paintings that have been made of Jesus are of him as a good shepherd, holding lambs in his arms, tending a flock, staff in hand, or even giving his life for his sheep. His sheep trust him. They follow him because they know the sound of his voice. Even though you and I don't get to physically with our ears hear the very voice of God, we still have his word as it's proclaimed to us week in and week out in this place. Unlike so many things in our world that are all based on speculation or some human desire and longing, the image of Jesus as our good shepherd is based on the very word of God. It's stable. It's something that we can take hold of, trust in. In fact, I want to test you a little bit now. I want to see if you know some of these fill-in-the-blanks, if you will. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. All right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, you guys know this stuff, right? Those are all from Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. But you know those very well. That's a good thing. Now I want to ask you, do you know when we often use the shepherd's psalm aside from Good Shepherd Sunday? Funerals, we often use Psalm 23 either as the psalm, the intro it, or somewhere in the liturgy for a funeral. Why? Because it reminds us who the person laying before us is and who we are too. We are God's sheep, and he is the good shepherd always seeking to lead us Now, not everyone, of course, though, treasures the image of Christ as the Good Shepherd. In fact, if you just simply run the numbers, we have a little more than 8 billion people in the world. And a little less than about 2 billion of those people claim to be Christians. So that right there would indicate that most people in our world don't treasure the image of Christ as the Good Shepherd. And there's, of course, a number of reasons why. I mean, some are caught up in other religions, having given their allegiance over to the God of human imagination. And they follow that God, clinging to those images that best depict it. Other people are caught up instead in themselves, believing wholeheartedly that they are actually the captain of their vessel and the master of their own destiny. Either way, they have, as Adam did, succumbed to the great reversal, seeking to dethrone God and put someone or something else up in his place. The Christian cries out, Kyrie eleison, that is, Lord, have mercy. All the while, Self-appointed deities and idols mellow to the sounds of, I did it my way. One of the major problems is that for all of us as human beings, we like to think that we actually have control over our lives. And this is really the classic struggle between man and God, isn't it? God says in his word, I, the Lord, am God. I'm the creator of the heavens and the earth. I'm the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm the one who put the stars in the sky. I'm the one who continues to keep everything in motion, including circling the planets around the sun. I caused the earth to spring forth beauty and fruit and bounty. 
He says, I am the Lord of life. I call forth the dead, and even the dead hear my voice and rise at my command. He says all of these things and more. And yet, so often, it seems, we are compelled to say something like, now, wait a minute. Aren't I the one in control? To confess Jesus as your shepherd is to confess His Lordship, His authority over you, which is ultimately to confess your lack of control in your life. And this is not easy for any of us to do. Because to one degree or another, I want to pause because I want to warn you, I'm going to use a very highly technical theological term here, okay? To one degree or another, each one of us is a control freak. That's the highly technical, highly theological term. Each of us is a control freak. That's why we have such a problem with saying those four words the Lord calls us to say and mean them. Thy will be done. Instead, we want it to be my will be done. And I want it done now. But no, the Lord calls us to say, Thy will be done. You see, God, as it turns out, knew what He was doing when He made the very first commandment what it is. Which is what? First commandment? Yeah, you shall have no other gods. Our God calls us to let go of our God complex, to follow Him. He says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. God loves you. He loves you with an incredible, unfathomable, divine love. A love that is most clearly expressed in Jesus Christ and the cross. In the life, death, and resurrection of His only begotten Son, we find the very thing that moves our hearts to fear, love, and trust in Him. To say instead in faith, I don't really know what it is that I want. I'm not really who and what I thought I was. I don't really have control over my life. Our Lord has shown us that He will always lead us with our best interests at heart. That He seeks to protect us from all harm and danger, even when that harm and danger causes Him to lose His life for our sake. When protecting us from harm and danger leads Him even to death on a cross, What greater love has any man than that he lay down his life for his friends? Our shepherd leads us down paths unknown to places unknown, virtually always to situations unknown. And all along the way, we are tempted to ask, God, do you really know what you're doing here? Maybe I should take the lead, even just for a little while. I mean, wouldn't it be better in this situation if I were the one in control? And God, no doubt, laughs and weeps at the same time. But He bears with us. He keeps calling us by name, showing us how futile it is for us to try to wrangle and wrestle that control. How futile it is for us to be led by anything other than Him. At one point when Jesus was teaching His disciples, He was at the home of Mary and Martha. 
Martha was busy trying to clean up the house, prepare a meal, and make sure that everything was absolutely perfect for this little visit from Jesus. While her sister Mary sat there at Jesus' feet, listening and learning. Martha comes and says to Jesus, look what she's doing. I'm doing all the rest of this stuff, and yet she just sits there. But I want you to listen to Jesus' response to her. He says, Martha, Martha, why are you worried and upset about many things? But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the better part. Now this isn't to say that God simply wants you and I to sit on our butts and read His Bible. Rest is a good thing, as is reading the Bible, but... With him being our good shepherd, he actually prohibits such an understanding. After all, a shepherd leads, and his sheep follow. That means there's stuff for us to do. Jesus walked a road of suffering and death because he came not to be served, but to serve and to offer his life as a ransom for many. To follow Jesus, to be his sheep, his disciple, is to let go of yourself so that your heart might be opened up to see the needs of others. Because trust me, there are plenty of people out in the world who have reached the point of utter exhaustion, who have tried with all their might to control their own destiny to try to make all the pieces of their life fit together the way they think they're supposed to, and yet they only end up frustrated, humiliated, and despairing. I know that I've been there, and maybe you're there now, or maybe you know how that feels to be as well. That exhaustion, that frustration that you feel, that others feel exists mainly because we were created to follow the One who calls us by name. That is Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who bids that we follow Him to find rest for our weary souls. The image and illustration of Christ as the Good Shepherd is one of peace and calm. And it's only found in Christ the one who laid down his life for the safety and welfare of his flock. He holds us tenderly in his arms, protecting us from everything that would seek to destroy us in body or soul. And when sin, when death, when the devil threatened to steal us away, threatened to confine us to the hell that we deserve for our sin, our shepherd says, no! I bought and paid for this one with my own precious blood. This one is mine. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. I lay down my life for the sheep. So now I'm going to sing it again. If you want to, you can sing it with me. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Please rise with me as we prepare to make confession of our faith. In the Apostles' Creed, set to what a friend we have in Jesus.
We continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. You are the good shepherd who laid down his life for us out of love. Help us to hear your voice, to follow where you lead, and to receive what you provide through your grace and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. For the times we fear our enemies and the powers against us, remind us that we belong to you and no one can snatch us from your hand. We bring before the Lord the part of your flock here in this place and others whom we love in their time of need. Carry them as lambs in a shepherd's arms through the difficult paths ahead. Give all wisdom to know the faithful path we are to take and shepherd us through every trial, trouble, and temptation. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. Give us courage that we will not live in captivity to our fears. Guide those who lead us in this and every land. Provide peace, justice, and freedom for people everywhere. In our busy days, give us time to reflect upon the goodness of God and to experience joy in the security and peace that you provide us, that we find contentment and peace in you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, or shepherd, and Lord, have mercy. Protect and defend the members of our armed forces and the public workers who keep our communities safe. Defend us from our enemies and teach us to rely on your provision, the true protector of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. That we do not forget those in need, but share with all the Lord has entrusted to us, and to display the kind of love shown and known that has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. That we recall the saints of old who put their trust in the Lord, that we also be found faithful when he returns in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. That as we gather at the table of communion of the saints for the forgiveness of sins, having faith to receive his gifts for the nourishment of our lives of faith now and to the life that is to come, let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. Gracious and kind Father, we also remember in our prayers those in need of health and healing. We pray for Ron, for Jill, and for Amanda. We also ask you, O Lord, to bring comfort to the family and friends of Liz, the stepmother of Lynn, who passed away this past Monday. We ask that you would be with each of these, that fears would be quelled, comfort would be shared, and the peace of Christ might be enjoyed. For these and all other things needful, let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Blessed are you, Almighty Father, for you sent your Son into this world to embody perfect love by laying down his life for his sheep and taking it up again on Easter in glorious victory over all that we ever might fear. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament, that fed, nourished, and forgiven by your means of grace, we lie down in green pastures and led by still waters. Restore our soul on paths of righteousness. Be with us even as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, comforted by your rod and staff. Prepare our table in the presence of enemies, and as we follow you, our good shepherd, Grant goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our life until we dwell in your house forever. To you alone be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. And now may this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Now depart in his peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, that you have fed us with your own body and blood, which you freely gave up for us by your perfect love for your flock. We pray that by this gift, our, str- our faith would be strengthened and we would be enabled to live for your glory as we faithfully follow where you lead. Grant that others would be brought into your flock as your spirit works in us, who with you and the Father are now one God, now and forever. Amen. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you might do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements before our hymn of departure. If you ordered Eaton's Pizza, uh, your, delivery, or your, your orders are ready for pickup. So uh, Aaron and Lori are out there in the narthex, uh, ready with your orders if you ordered anything. So make sure that you stop by there if you did order something. Um, next Sunday, May 2nd, is the, uh, the deadline to put names in the bulletin for the Mother's Day bulletin. Again, the cost for each name is a dollar, uh, and you can fill out the information either in memory of someone who has passed away or in honor of someone who is still alive. Um, all you have to do is fill out one of the envelopes and then have the money returned to the office. And the proceeds for this year's Mother's Day Bulletin uh, sale go to support Amy Formella, um, our Lutheran Bible translator over in Sierra Leone. Um, So it goes to a good cause, so it's definitely something that's worth doing, and it pays homage to a a wonderful woman in your life. Uh, Next Sunday evening, we have a Sunday school end-of-the-year meeting for teachers and staff. So this should be an opportunity for teachers and the staff to get together to kind of debrief on what has happened over the the, the past year in preparation for what we want to do next year. We've had to overcome many hurdles throughout this whole COVID thing, but as we get to see kind of the light coming at the end of the tunnel, we want to start working toward what that's going to look like, start shaping things now so that hopefully we'll, when we get there in the fall, we'll be able to open things up kind of as, as normal or closer to normal. Uh, so again, that meeting is next Sunday, May 2nd at 6.30 p.m., Um, We are planning on having VBS, of course, this year in June. It'll be June 7th through the 11th. And with all of the different area uh, uh, public schools getting out during the same week, which is the week before we're planning to do VBS, we have a really good opportunity to try to get as many kids as possible to be involved with our VBS this year. Um, So if you want to, you can pick up information about our VBS program for this year there in the center hallway. Uh, Also on the same bulletin board are the sign-up sheets or volunteer sheets. So if you're willing to help us by volunteering for VBS, that's also another wonderful way that you can serve the church and reach out to many of these youngsters who may not be coming from our church. They might be coming from either another church body or possibly not from a church at all. So it's a good way that we can try to reach out to people with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, One of the last two announcements, I guess, that I have, um, we're trying to kind of keep coffee fellowship going in between the services, but we need more people. We need more hands to help out with that. Um, to, to, To make up the coffee for the coffee fellowship, it doesn't take very long. I got primed on it last Sunday uh, at a, and it took about 10 minutes, I think, for them to really show me what to do to where I felt like I could comfortably do it on my own, even. 
Um, so it's not difficult, but we do need volunteers. And the sign-up sheet is over. Uh, I think there's one that's outside the fellowship hall, and I think there's even a sign-up sheet that's in the fellowship hall as well. So if you're willing to, uh, to serve in that way, you can either go and sign up on one of those boards, or you can get in touch with Amanda Sattler, who's kind of heading that up for the Board of Evangelism, and her information, I believe, is in the bulletin news. The last thing I want to mention is that today, as soon as this service is over with, uh, we're supposed to have a, our first sort of youth event, if you will, kind of a softball youth event, um, playing some board games in the, in the fellowship hall for a couple of hours. Uh, food is, is provided for those youth that want to attend that. Um, and of course, as I've offered before, you know, youth that might need a ride home or something like that, I can absolutely work that out as well, whether it's myself or another parent giving them a ride home. Um, so any of you that are able to do that, you know, please, please go ahead and come for that. Uh, again, this is just kind of supposed to be kind of a light youth kickoff, uh, although I think we'll kind of really make a go at it next month, you know, since uh, we'll be looking toward when the kids will actually be out of school. Um, are there any other important announcements that anyone knows need to be made? Oh, the Leadership Summit. Yes, we have a Leadership Summit tomorrow evening here at the church at 6.30. We'd like to have all of the church leadership gathered together uh, for a presentation um, as well as to discuss things for the next year. We weren't able to have the Youth Leadership Summit back in January or February, but we feel comfortable that we can do so now in a, in a very safe way where people can hopefully be more comfortable with it as well. Any other important announcements? I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I, I, I seem to often feel that way these weeks. All right, well, wonderful. Please join together with me once more in heart and in voice as we sing our hymn of departure, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. 